Hey guys, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And today we are going to be talking about the right to repair because quite frankly, in this situation, the coronavirus pandemic, the right to repair is going to get somebody killed. Now, here's what's going on. The right to repair is basically something that has been debated on multiple fronts in society for years, obviously here in the United States. Now, what we're talking about is manufacturers that are not allowing third parties, whether it's the owner or a third party, let's say repair shop, to actually fix things because they've kept a very tight control over that, typically due to warranties and other things. For example, on one front, you have farmers that uh, don't have the right to modify anything in a John Deere tractor like the software in it without John Deere doing things like voiding the warranty. Uh, they actually have to wait for a John Deere authorized repair person to come and fix this, which obviously could be a very serious issue if they're in the middle of harvest time. You know, more closer to the urban area, we can even talk about Apple iPhones where third party repair shops want to do things like repa uh, replace broken screens and all of that. And Apple has clamped down very hard restricting this under the basically the uh, premise that this would void the warranty, even though there's a lot of repair shops that will do this for, let's say, less expensive than Apple, therefore making it a very reasonable option for people that don't want to pay an expensive amount of money, uh, you know, possibly to Apple if they are out of warranty. And if you didn't know, and the reason why we're talking about this today is that right to repair also applies to medical equipment. And this is the problem that we have now. Now, this is coming from both TechDirt and Vice News. And I think this is a very serious issue because one key thing that has emerged through this entire issue here in the United States, meaning the coronavirus outbreak, is that there is not enough ventilators in hospitals to keep the most serious uh, patients that are infected alive. The fear is that doctors are actually going to have to make on the spot decisions of basically who has priority to ventilators that are available basically meaning that they are getting to choose who may live and who may die. Now, given the concern for lack of ventilators, hospitals around the nation have been trying to find uh, ways to repair or reuse ventilators, which is something that they're not supposed to be doing per manufacturer specifications. Some ventilator manufacturers, though, are going out of their way to actually make these repairs difficult. For example, <clears throat> they have tried to keep these service manuals out of the hands of independent repair professionals, and they've even taken legal action in the past against independent databases of manuals. So, for example, there's a website called Frank's Hospital Workshop, which basically is there to try to help people repair medical equipment, and they have been forced legally to remove some of the manuals, replacing them with the explanation, and I quote, download prohibited, support is not desired. Now, the argument against allowing hospitals to employ independent technicians is simply this, and to quote a Vice article, AdvaMed, which is a medical device manufacturer trade group that represents more than 400 companies in this field, including Siemens, GE, Healthcare, and Philips, which obviously are among the largest of those 400, wrote a letter to lawmakers in the state of Massachusetts claiming that the right to repair legislation, and I quote, could result in maintenance and repairs of medical devices being performed by untrained personnel and that inappropriate replacement parts may be used, obviously possibly damaging or weakening this. But here's the thing, now is not the time to stand on an issue like uh, right to repair when lives are at stake. I think the device makers should basically let hospitals be fixing or repairing what they need, and when this pandemic passes, they can basically lock it back down and we can continue this debate again. I can understand their concern. An unqualified person could potentially damage or break expensive medical equipment, but we're in an emergency situation here and many hospitals, quite frankly, are getting desperate around the United States. Plus, if the ventilator can't be used until it's repaired or fixed, that could take an eternity in a pandemic when all of these medical manufacturers are scrambling, let's say, to send technicians all over because they are being overwhelmed by requests. So why not let them try? Maybe they're able to successfully repair it. We've seen cases in Italy where they were 3D printing parts you know, that were much less expensive than the ventilators that they were getting in Italy. And while they wouldn't last as long, they were doing the trick and they could easily replicate more to keep it going. That helped the hospital in Italy that saw that and they were printing these uh, ventilators for something like one to ten dollars where they were spending $11,000 per ventilator 
uh, previously, and obviously these one to ten dollar ventilator of like valves or whatever it was are not nearly withstanding the punishment. But if you can replicate ten of those things, uh, you know you're still way ahead of the game and you're saving lives. This is a huge thing. Now I think the trick here though is going to be finding that balance. It's going to be finding a way to ensure that what happens when the hospitals start repairing these things themselves can basically accommodate the device manufacturer's intellectual property or their restriction of it. Maybe some form of DRM, digital rights management, maybe uh, you know training technicians to be deployed in hospitals, meaning let's say a, a hospital employee gets, uh, you know, gets trained on this and, and has to sign an NDA or something, or maybe uh, they just hire like the GE Healthcare's and Philips of the world start hiring a like basically like an army of repair people uh you know in that sense and keep them under contract but the point is this can be figured out and if we have ventilators sitting there that let's say could be easily repaired or somebody might be able to figure this out and there's 10 of them and maybe they break one but the other nine get fixed that is way better than having them sit there for potentially weeks as they're not being used when they could be. And so I think this is something that that we really have to discuss, but it's really, I think, shining a light on the entire right to repair situation. And I can understand that, you know, if you've got an $800,000 John Deere tractor and you screw up the software, the impetus is on you. John Deere doesn't want to honor that or fix that, but we're not necessarily talking about that. We are talking about life-saving equipment at the moment, and I think the gloves need to come off. I think that's where we need to be right now. And quite frankly, it's the same way with patent holders. If somebody is ripping you off, sue them when the pandemic is done. But right now, we've all got to pull together. And so feel free to disagree. I have no doubt that many of you will. But that is your news of the day. And hopefully, we'll be able to save some lives if hospitals are able to fix their ventilators. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to, uh, feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks, guys.